and now finally let us try to sum up all our lectures which were dedicated to the problem of word building. Uh, we said that if viewed structurally, words appear to be divisible into smaller units, which are called morphemes. Morphemes possess meanings of their own. All morphemes are subdivided into two large classes, roots or radicals and affixes. The latter, in their turn, fall into prefixes which precede the root in the structure of the word, as in reread, mispronounce, unwell, and suffixes uh, which follow the root, as in teacher, curable, dictate, etc. Uh, so the four types, root words, derived words, compounds, and shortenings, represent the main structural types of modern English words, and conversion, derivation, and composition, the most productive ways of word building. Um, affixation. Now, the process of affixation consists in coining a new word by adding an affix or several affixes to some root morpheme. The role of the affix in this procedure is very important and therefore it is necessary to consider certain facts about the main types of affixes. From the etymological point of view, affixes are classified into the same or two large groups as words, native and borrowed, and we discussed some are native and borrowed affixes. Uh, affixes can also be classified into productive and non-productive types. By productive affixes, we mean the ones which take part in deriving new words in this particular period of language development. The best way to identify productive affixes is to look for them among neologisms and so-called nonce words. Uh, and we said that nonce word is a word uh, which is used only for this particular uh, occasion. For example, mandish. Um, and uh, uh, we discussed uh, semantics of affixes. Uh, we said that there are numerous derived words whose meanings can be easily deduced from the meanings of their constituent parts. Uh, the noun forming suffix er uh, could be roughly defined as designating persons from the object of their occupation or uh, labor. For example, painter is the one who paints or from the place of origin or abode. Uh, for example, sousing, it is uh, the one living in the south. Uh, the adjective forming suffix full has the meaning of full of, characterized by, uh, as uh, in case of beautiful, careful, etc. Yet, such cases represent only the first and simplest stage of semantic readjustment within derived words. The constituent morphemes within derivatives do not always preserve their current meanings and uh, are open uh, to subtle and com com complicated semantic shifts. Uh, conversion. Conversion consists in making a new word uh, from some existing word by changing the category of a part of speech, uh, the morphemic shape of the original word remaining unchanged. Uh, the new word has a meaning which differs uh, from that of the original one, though it can more or less be easily associated with it. It has also a new paradigm peculiar to its new category as a part of speech. For example, nurse. Yes, nurse as a noun and nurse as a verb. Uh, conversion is not only a highly productive but also a particularly English uh, way of word building. Its immense uh, productivity is considerably uh, encouraged by certain features of the English language in its modern stage of development. The analytical structure of modern English greatly facilitates processes of making words of one category of parts of speech from words of another. Uh, so conversion is a convenient and easy way of enriching the vocabulary with new words. It is certainly an advantage to have two or more words where there was one, uh, and all of them fixed on the same structural and semantic base. 
So a word uh, made by conversion has a different meaning from that of the word from which it was made, though the two meanings can be associated. Um, and we discussed composition. This type of word building, in which new words are produced by combining two or more stems, is one of the three most productive types in modern English. Compounds are not homogeneous in structure. Traditionally, three types are distinguished, neutral, morphological, and syntactic. Another focus of interest is the semantic aspect of compound words. That is a question of correlations of the separate meanings of the constituent parts and the actual meaning of the compound. Or, to put it in easier terms, uh, can the meaning of a compound word be regarded as the sum of its constituent meanings? And we singled out three groups to answer the above question. Uh, in group one, uh, meaning, uh, meanings can really be described as the sum of their constituent meanings. Uh, in other groups, meanings do not correspond to the separate meanings of their constituent parts. Um, criteria for composition. A further theoretical aspect of composition is a criteria for distinguishing between a compound and a word combination. Uh, and we discussed the example of a word combination, a tall boy, and a word, tall boy. In this case, the graphic criterion of distinguishing between a word and a word group seems to be sufficiently convincing. Yet, in many cases, it cannot uh, wholly be relied on. The spelling of many compounds, tall boy among them, can be uh, varied. Uh, in the case of tall boy, the semantic criterion uh, seems more reliable, for the striking difference in the meanings of the word and the word groups certainly points to the highest degree of semantic cohesion in the word. Uh, so the word tall boy does not even denote a person, but a piece of furniture, a chest of drawers supported by a low stand. Moreover, the word group a tall boy conveys two concepts, a young male person and big in size, where the word tall boy, uh, as we have already mentioned, expresses only one concept. The phonetic criterion for compounds may be treated as that of a single stress. Uh, the criterion is convincingly applicable to many compound nouns yet does not work with compound adjectives. Uh, for example, slow coach, blackbird, tall boy, but blue-eyed, absent-minded, ill-mannered, uh, etc. Uh, morphological and syntactic criteria can also be applied to compound words uh, in order to distinguish them from word groups. Uh, in the word group, a tall boy each of the constituents is independently open to grammatical changes peculiar to its own uh, category as a part of speech. Uh, so they were the tallest boys uh, in their form. Uh, between the constituent parts of the word group, other words uh, can be inserted. For example, a tall, handsome boy. Uh, the compound tall boy, and in actual fact any other compound, is not uh, subject to such changes. Uh, the first component is grammatically invariable. Uh, the plural form ending is added to the whole unit. Uh, for example, tall boys. No word can be inserted between the components, even uh, with the compounds which have a traditional separate graphic form. Uh, all this leads us to the conclusion that in most cases, only a several criteria, semantic, morphological, syntactic, phonetic, graphic, can convincingly classify a lexical unit as either a, a compound word or a word group. semi uh, uh, The component proof, uh, as in kiss proof, sound proof, uh, standing thus between a stem and an affix, is regarded by some scholars as a semi-affix. 
Uh, another example of semi-affix is uh, men uh, in a vast group of English nouns denoting people, uh, such as sportsman, gentleman, nobleman, salesman, seaman, fisherman, countryman, statesman, policeman, chairman. Other examples of semi-affixes are land, Scotland, fatherland, wonderland, like, ladylike, unladylike, businesslike, unbusinesslike, starlike, flowerlike, uh, worthy, uh, as in seaworthy, seaworthy, trustworthy, praiseworthy, etc. Uh, shortening or contraction. This comparatively uh, new way of word building has achieved a high degree of productivity nowadays, especially in American English. Uh, shortenings or co contracted words or curtailed words are produced in two different ways. The first is to make a new word from a syllable rarer to of the original word. The latter may lose its beginning as in phone made from telephone, fence from defense, its ending as in holes from holidays, back from vacation, props from properties, ed from advertisement, or both the beginning and ending as in flu uh, from influenza. Uh, the second way of shortening is to make a new word uh, from the initial letters of a word group. Uh, for example, you know, United Nations Organization, BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, MP, Member of Parliament. This type is called initial shortenings. They are found not only among formal words, but also among uh, colloquialisms and slang. And sound imitation, onomatopoeia. Words coined by this type of word building are made by imitating different kinds of sounds uh, that may be produced by animals, birds, insects, human beings, and inanimate objects. It is um, uh, of some interest that uh, sounds produced by the same kind of animal are frequently represented by quite different sound groups in different languages. So English dogs uh, bark or howl. The English cock cries cock a doo uh, In uh, England, uh, ducks quack and frogs croak. So uh, some nouns, uh, names of animals, and especially of birds and insects, are also produced by sound imitation. Uh, crow, cuckoo, hummingbird, cricket, uh, etc.